Hey everyone, uh, Kylie here. So I randomly get these ideas for different businesses and I like to see the financial viability of them. And I thought it might be kind of fun to record that process, what it takes to basically assess a business idea from scratch without going too deep, too, too in depth. And I figured it might help some people whenever they have harebrained ideas like me, kind of figure out whether or not these things are actually viable. So. I'm recording this at my house, kids are playing, you might hear some random kids, you might hear some random noise, and I'm gonna try and go through it in one take and uh, see how it comes out. So, here we go. Um, the first thing that I generally do, of course, is uh, open up Excel. That's kind of a no-brainer. And I just begin to figure out the basic expenses associated with things, and not only expenses, but, uh, but revenue potential too. So, the idea right here is a driving range. And so what generates driving range revenue is people hitting balls. So um, I need to figure out a couple of things. The first thing I need to figure out is uh, cost, not cost, revenue per basket of balls. Um, I need to figure out how many balls in a basket. I need to figure out how long it takes people to hit a basket of balls and I need to figure out let's see number of people in the area that way I can get a basic assumption of how many people I could reasonably expect to come to the driving range um, expenses would probably be land. I think that it's possible to probably lease some land to do this. Um, maintenance, let's see, um, employees, and then of course we'll have to figure out their cost per hour or yeah, their cost per hour. Um, what else? What else? Land, maintenance, employees. Um, then you have GNA, which is going to be insurance and stuff like that. I'll just add a percentage onto there. Um, I'm not going to in-depth research insurance rates for um, driving ranges. So I'm just going to pull up trusty old Google here. If it'll load for me today. Come on, Google. And there we go. Um, average driving range revenue. Let's just start there. Average driving range revenue. Um, creating passive income. Let's see here. Economics of golf, profit in the driving range. Let's see. I'm going to start here and see what that says. Um, fertilizer and seed would add up. Oh yeah, so that's another potential revenue stream is uh, lessons. You could rent out time or charge just a little commission for people to teach lessons at the driving range. It'd be fairly simple. Um, average driving range cost. Let's do that. Um, actually, let's do this. Driving range near me. Um, yeah, I'm in Denver area, so let's see. Aqua Golf, no, not Top Golf. Um, having some trouble finding a driving range, which is exactly the reason why I'm doing this is because there are no driving range driving ranges anywhere near. So let's look at Inglewood, Colorado over here. Course rates. Try to see what we can figure out. <coughs> Excuse me. Green fees, par three, cart rental, club rental, annual passes. I don't think I'm finding that much information here. <coughs> Cost of a bucket of balls. Let's try that.
How many? 10 cents a ball. Okay, so this is saying 10 cents a ball. It's fairly standard. You get $20 for the balls. Okay, I like that. Let's go with that. Um, let's go with revenue per ball. And let's just say we can average about five cents a ball. And how many balls are in a basket? A hundred. And so let's see, a cost of a basket is, or let's say revenue of basket is 100 times 0.05, of course it's $5. Um, how long does it take? It probably takes 60 minutes to hit a bus, hit a basket of balls. And so let's keep going here and say uh, number of slots. Let's see if we can have 30 slots. Then we can do how much per hour? Max rev per hour. So 30, let's do this. Let's do number of, number of minutes in an hour divided by how long it takes people to hit a basket of balls times the number of slots times the revenue per basket. And so max revenue per hour. And that way if, if it takes people only 30 minutes to hit a basket of balls, our max revenue per hour goes up. So that makes sense. Um, so let's just keep going here. Um, max revenue per hour, 150. And so rev, let's say open hours per day. We could say probably, if we did eight to eight, it would be 12, but you can't do that all the time. Probably 10, to be honest, 10 hours. And so revenue per day. $1,500 and that's at max capacity it's $1,500 in this scenario um, I think that the number of people in the area is irrelevant because we can do about how many people per day people per day 1500 divided by the revenue per so that's let's, that's more baskets per day. 300. I mean, that's not that many uh, in the grand scheme of things. A lot of people at $5 a basket, which is really low. People would hit a couple of baskets. And then lessons. Let's say that we rent out lessons for two hours, eh, 20 hours a week. And we get a commission of $10 per, per lesson. Let's just spitball. We make about two hundred dollars per week. So, lesson weekly rev. How about that? Then we'll say weekly rev is this plus fifteen hundred times. You could probably be open realistically seven days a week. In fact, it'd be ideal to be open seven days a week. Ten thousand seven hundred. Um, Yearly rev would be this times 52 if you're open 365. So probably not quite, but let's do that. Okay, so now, now I'm going to figure out some startup expenses. Um, startup expenses would probably be you need golf carts and you need picker uppers and you need general equipment you could probably skate by for I don't know 25,000 that's just a that's just a rough guess that could be high that could be low land would be a monthly expense because I'm talking about leasing the land here in Colorado it's already hilly and everything else so uh, it's not something you want to buy or really improve you know you basically would just um, you would just use it as is use it as you find it maybe trim it up a little bit, plant some seed, but it wouldn't be overly important to, to keep it, uh, to keep it green or anything like that. I don't think many people expect that. You just want to hit the balls. And this is a budget driving range, of course, cause it's only $5 per basket. So, um, let's see. 
plan for Elise Parker CEO. And let's just look right here. There may not even be anything in the in the area. We need office land. Okay, that's nine tenths of an acre. One lot, one lot. Jordan. And of course the lease rates are not specified. Just trying to find something reasonable here to, uh, to go off of. Maybe something right there, what is that? Need a good bit of land for a driving range. Let's see what this is. 10 acres. It's already improved. Not necessarily what we're looking for. But it's average land lease per acre. I'm trying to get a basic idea of what I'm getting into. Land lease. Driving range. Uh, it's hard to find what I'm looking for here. So let's just make an assumption because that's what I do whenever I can't find it quickly. I just make an assumption. So we need how many acres? We need something at least 300 yards plus long. Um, Let's look up the dimensions of one acre. One acre dimensions in yards. Let's do that. One acre is 43,560 square feet. Let's see. Okay, the most basic shape from one acre is one furlong by 66 feet, 660 feet by 66 feet. Okay, so we would need something two, three, four acres wide, at least two acres deep. Two acres deep would be 300 and some odd yards 660 let's see that's 12 13 20 divided by 3 13 20 divided by 3 yeah, that's 400 yards so that's deep enough so we need eight acres give or take let's say eight, eight acres um let's say it is how much per acre per month probably pretty pricey to be honest i don't know i'm just gonna i'm just gonna assume it's gonna be eight thousand dollars so a thousand per acre per month. Actually, that's not enough. Let's say sixteen thousand. So it's two thousand per acre per month. That's pretty pricey. Um, maintenance would probably be fuel, tractor maintenance, everything maintenance. I don't know. I would like to say probably six thousand a month. That's probably a little pricey too. Um, and employees, let's see, how many hours a day are we running at? 10 hours a day, seven days a week, so it's 70 hours. And you need two employees for 70 hours. So it'd be more than two, but let's say two. Um, They're at all times. Let's say, let's figure out their rate. Two employees rate, let's pay them 15 bucks an hour. And hours a week is 70. Actually, it's going to be more than that. Let's say 77 because they're there 30 minutes before it opens. They're there 30, 30 minutes after it closes. Okay, so 
monthly labor is 2 times 15 times 77 times 4. So 9,240. And general administrative expense, so insurance, I mean everything, accounting, you name it. Let's just set that as 10% of revenue. percent of revenue times four because it's monthly 4,280 okay so total expenses GNA labor maintenance land 35,520 so let's see we can net weekly revenue times four minus this 7,280 if we're at 100% capacity. So let's mess with that a little bit more and do a quick sensitivity analysis. So let's do 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and then one. And then let's also do a bucket of all prices, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and Let's insert a data table. I don't remember how to do this. I'm gonna you're, you're gonna watch me struggle through this. So how do I do this? How do I do this? Insert. Tell you what. Let's Google it. It's been a couple months since I've done it, and I've already forgotten how to do the data table. Um, let's see. Data tab, data table, what if analysis. Okay, I'm gonna move that to the other screen. Data tab, what if analysis, data table. Okay, row input cell. Let's see, I need to do, okay, that actually needs to do this here. Weekly revenue, let's do this, capacity. And then let's just do one here. And so we'll just multiply the weekly revenue times capacity in order for the data table to work. That way if I put 0.5, it would obviously reduce capacity. Okay, so let's try this again. Data table, row input cell, capacity. Column input cell would be the revenue of a basket here. Ooh, okay, all right. Keep on trying, keep on trying. Data table, let's highlight the whole day with data table. Capacity, column, revenue in a basket. Okay, all right, and something still didn't work. What did I do wrong? I think I need to reference weekly revenue here. There we go. <laughs> okay, so this is what we wanna see here. Just to make this easier to follow, let's make this white. Okay, and so this is our sensitivity analysis, and this is capacity and this is rev per basket. And basically the way that we want to do this or we, the way we want to analyze this is to figure out what's the most realistic thing what's the most realistic combination of the two so say we meet 50 percent capacity but our revenue per basket is ten dollars per basket then we can break even right because this ten thousand seven hundred times four is greater than this so let's just adjust these a little bit to multiply by four. And then let's apply conditional formatting to say highlight cells greater than, format cells that are greater than our total expenses. And let's format them with green fill with dark green text. So the only way to make this work is to pick a combination 
of estimate of capacity and revenue per basket somewhere that's green. So the way that I'm going to look at that is that the revenue per basket has to be a minimum of $9 or else we don't have enough wiggle room in our model. Now that being said, I think $9 is actually a reasonable price per basket and it actually makes this a fairly viable business. The problem is you don't make much money. <laughs> At the end of the day, you don't make much money because here your revenue of 38.6 minus your total expenses, you're only making about $3,000 per month, which isn't bad if your expenses are correct, which they may or may not be. However, if you're during the busier months, you could be making $30,000, $40,000 a month. Um, that's just the basics of how I do a really quick, really dirty business analysis. I overestimate expenses. I try to underestimate on revenues. I try to figure out the basis of what's driving that revenue. And then I do a quick sensitivity analysis based on capacity and revenue and pick something that seems realistic. I would say overall, this could be a reasonable proposition if you could hit all these metrics. Um, you know, and there's possibility to make a lot of money, especially in the high months. I mean, if you're doing three months out of the year at 100% capacity or say 90% capacity, you know, you're making $30,000, $40,000 for three or four months. You're doing pretty good. And then the rest of the year, if you kind of eat by, make four or $5,000 a month, you still had a hundred grand profit per year business that is probably pretty fun to run. You're out there hitting golf balls. You're having a good time. I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting business. Uh, one I felt like breaking down cause I talked to somebody about the, uh, the economics of it earlier and, uh, you know, this could be off, but this is, would be the first pass on how I evaluate a business just like this. So hope it was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, um, let me know if there's another type of business you'd like to see me do this with. Um, put in a comment, something like that. I'll try and get around to it. I really like doing stuff like this. It's exciting to me to try and figure out the underlying basis of, of different businesses, and I'd love to do more of them. So thanks for watching.